Ooh, I'm just talking about what you did. I'm, I'm just pointing out your pockets of success. You didn't do anything in the 80s. You, you, you didn't do anything in the 80s. So in the 90s, you had about a five-year run there, right? I know that run seems longer than it really was, but really you started your playoffs in like 91. In 95, it was a wrap. Yeah, yeah, whoa, 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 You haven't been back to a conference championship game since, right? So, so like, quite frankly, you can keep living in the past all you want to, right? Times have changed. Things have evolved. We're 25 years removed. There's nothing that you've done with the exception of losing more than the Eagles. You, you haven't won more divisions. You don't have more division wins. You haven't gone to the playoffs more. You haven't been in the Super Bowl more in the last 25 years. There's nothing that you've done. You've fired more coaches. You've lost more games. You've made more excuses than anybody I've ever seen as a fan. That's all you've done is lived in the past, Chris. Now you may go. Yeah, 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 Lil Brunson back at you with the back at you, and I am the best reporting on the Eagles. I've been saying this for a minute, man. They listen to our content, man. It's no surprise there, but you know what I mean? It's only right that on the biggest stage, they regurgitate what we've been saying for the longest. We've been knew these guys was inadequate. We've been knew these guys wasn't going to be able to, you know what I mean? They, for, listen, what I agree said, I've been saying it, man. We're going to skip past that, though. Listen, man, I don't own the rights to that video you just saw, man, but you know what it is. Listen, man, at the end of the day, man, I feel like we're at the perfect time of the season to start giving out some awards. You know what I mean? Basically, the season rides on this. You could kind of look at this as the last game of the season until we take these dudes out, because in order to make the playoffs, we got to beat the uh, Giants after this. Um, the Dallas Cowboys, man, right now, uh, in a nutshell, they looking like that, you know, that ain't healthy. That's the, that's, that's the consensus right now, that deck ain't healthy. This game just got a little more interesting. You know what I'm saying? Um, it's looking more and more like we got a chance to take take this game, man, despite the shortcomings that we've shown. I'm glad that we coming into this game knowing that nobody giving us a chance. I like that type of stuff, man. But let's talk about the wide receiver core for a minute. As a collective, the wide receiver core get an F. We're giving out grades, man. We're giving out grades. We're going to go, we're going to go positions. Uh, not, we're not going to go positions. We're going to go groups. And then we're going to go coaches. And we're going to go individual players, like your franchise quarterback and stuff like that. And your, uh, like your individual running backs and your rookies, man. Um, wide receiver core, man, as a whole, I'm going to give the wide receiver core an F. I just feel like the wide receiver core hasn't really done anything all season, man. Injuries is one of the biggest reasons why, but it's self explanatory why I would give the wide receiver core an F. Um, to stay on the offensive side of the ball, the tight end core. I'm going to give the tight end core a B. I think Zach Ertz, I mean, obviously Zach Ertz um, <clears throat> stepped up. Zach Ertz made the Pro Bowl. Uh, you know, Dallas, Dallas Goddard. Well, well, Dallas Goddard and Zach Ertz both um, have over 60%, a 60% completion rate with Carson Wentz. So come on, man. They, they playing lights up, man. One of the best tight end uh, cores in the game. I'm going to go ahead and give them a B. The only reason why I'm going to give them a B because... Um, I believe Zach Ertz and Dallas Goddard have dropped touchdown passes this season. So, you know, I just don't like that aspect of um, of, of tight, tight ends supposed to be your shorthanded guys in the red zone. So I'm going to give them a B right there. Let's go down to your running backs, man. Um, I'm going to give the running backs a B, man. I'm going to give the running backs a B. Uh, we, 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 we stuck with the run a lot this year for the most part. Um, Miles Sanders breaking Deshaun Jackson's record, man. Uh, immaculate for him. Uh, uh, immaculate, just immaculate for this guy, man. He brought a spark to the running back room that we really, really needed. Um, especially with losing Darren Sproles. Jordan Howard, when available, has play, played pretty well. But Miles Sanders literally has played every game this season. I don't think Miles Sanders missed a game this season. So I'm gonna give the running backs. I'm gonna give the running backs a B, a C. Um, I'm gonna give him a C plus. I'll give him a C plus. Uh, but Miles Sanders as an individual rookie player, I'm gonna give Miles Sanders uh, a. They're not talking about Miles Sanders enough for offensive rookie of the year. They they absolutely need to be talking about Miles Sanders, man. Miles Sanders been putting in some work, man. Been putting in big time work, man. Um, let's go down to the offensive line. I'm gonna give the offensive line a C. Um, Carson Wentz was under pressure a lot this year, man. I, I didn't really like it. Jason Peters with all the false starts. As a collective group, I'm going to get them guys a C, man. Uh, Lane Johnson, I mean, Brooks probably was the best offensive lineman for us all year. Uh, Kelsey did his thing. Lane Johnson did his thing at times. But overall, great, man. I'm going to just go ahead and slap a C on them dudes, man. Um, the defensive line. Let's jump to them guys, man. I'm going to give the defensive line a D. I'm going to give the defensive line a D, man. The defensive line hasn't been able to get pressure on teams where they were supposed to get pressure on. With the, with the exception of the, the Jets, 
playing against a quarterback who never plays. You know what I mean? We got 10 sacks against that guy, but the defensive line should have been way more productive given the fact that uh, Fletcher Cox made the Pro Bowl, which I really don't even agree with. I, th I think Brandon Graham could have made the Pro Bowl over Fletcher Cox, but I'm going to go ahead and get them guys a D, man. They didn't do a, lot, a bunch of nothing. Tim Jernigan didn't do anything this year for me. Uh, Brandon Graham uh, played okay at times. Barnett played okay at times. The interior pass rush has been terrible. But you know what? I'm going to go ahead and give them a C, an even C, because they've been good at stopping the run for the most part this year. So they've been good at stopping the run. So they've done something on the interior. Um, secondary, man. The secondary has been abysmal, man. I gotta, I gotta slap an F on the secondary. Safety's included, man. An F goes straight to the safe, uh, to the secondary, man. That's, you know, come on. Self-explanatory why them guys gonna get an F, man. Um, Carson Wentz, man. I'm gonna give Carson Wentz an A on the season. I know a lot of people are not gonna agree with that, man. For Carson Wentz to be seventh in touchdown passes, um, for Carson Wentz to, you, you, you know, you know, have have had 11 touchdown passes dropped and be seventh in touchdown passes. You got to be kidding me, man. Carson Wentz absolutely deserves an A, man. Uh, single single digit interception number. Um, Carson Wentz with with very limited weapons has beaten uh, Aaron Rodgers, has beaten the Bills, beaten the Bears. Two comeback drives with limited weapons with throwing touchdown passes. Carson Wentz is throwing a touchdown pass in every game this season, at least one in every game this season. He's on the streak with that right there. I mean, Carson Wentz has did what he was supposed to do from the quarterback standpoint. A lot of people don't know this, man. Six of the seven Carson Wentz, six, six of the seven wins that Carson Wentz has, um, I think the receivers um, have 75 yards or less. That's tied for first. Well, guess who? Lamar Jackson, who's going to be the MVP. The only game that that we that from a receiving standpoint, one of the only games that we had uh, were guys averaged. Uh, I think we had we had two games where we had two hundred yard receivers. You know what I mean? Two games where we had two hundred yard receivers. So man, it's just it's it's self explanatory, man. That I can remember, man. That I can remember from wide receivers, not not including Zach Ertz. We had two games where we had a hundred yard receivers. One was the Miami game. Alshon Jeffrey had over hundred yards in that, and the other game was the first game of the season with Deshaun Jackson caught the two fifty yard touchdown passes. So I'm gonna give Carson Wentz an A, man. Carson Wentz dealt with adversity. He dealt with the public criticizing him. He dealt with everybody on TV with it with with this, with this weird love hate relationship with Carson Wentz. Man, he dealt with everything, man. It dealt everything like a professional. To people saying he loses in the locker room. To people saying that they they play harder for fools. Then you fast forward. He's in a position to where he's probably about to win the NFC East. My hats off to Carson Wentz, man. Doug Peterson, man. I'm gonna give Doug Peterson. I'm gonna give Doug Peterson a C plus. Uh, Doug Peterson's play calling has been really shaky all season. Um, Doug Peterson could have done better in a lot of areas, man. Um, I understand we were short. Doug was trying to figure it out. Who's the best guys to put in these positions? You know, one thing I don't like about the Eagles coaching staff and Doug Peterson got to take the main hit for this is that we play a lot of favoritism ball. You know what I mean? Greg Ward and Boston Scott, them dudes was on the practice squad the whole time. Yet and still, we decided to keep riding it out with guys. When we were getting thinner and thinner and thinner, we didn't want to bring nobody up. If we were to bring some of these guys up earlier, they'd have been way more acclimated to the playbook. They'd have been ready. They would have been ready. But you know, everything happens for a reason, man. Uh, Doug, Doug Peterson with a decision to not bench, uh, well, not bench Jason Peters, the decision to not rotate Jason Peters out, especially on critical downs where we can't afford a false start. He does it too much. You, you, you know, you saw the emergence of Andre Dillard. To not give Andre Dillard way more playing time than he's gotten, it's, it's, it's just a disgrace to me, man. A disgrace to me. Special teams, I'm going to give special teams a B. Um, they did allow uh, a kickoff return to the Lions that definitely helped the Lions beat us. But other than that, uh, the punt game and special teams, man, dude's been pretty solid all year right there, man. I think we actually blocked the punt too on special teams. So I'm going to give him a solid B. Jim Schwartz, I got to give Jim Schwartz a D. Although Jim Schwartz probably deserves an F, I'm going to go ahead and give him a D because Jim Schwartz was able to do things like do enough to stop Green Bay, do enough to stop the Bills, do enough to stop the Bears. You see what I'm saying? Jim Schwartz was able to, you know, and, and, you know, Jim Schwartz didn't have it easy in the beginning of the season, man. Jim Schwartz had to piece together himself. Jim Schwartz had to piece together the, the uh, a secondary again for the second straight year. Jim Schwartz scheme needs a little tuning up. So he, he's, look, he's looking at a very low D, borderline F, man, borderline F, man. Borderline F. You know, the woes of the secondary directly fall on him if you're asking me, man. So that's some of my grades for the key positions, man. Linebacker core, I'll give the linebacker core a C. I mean, you know, the linebacker core don't do a, a, enough for me in coverage, but a lot of that got to do with scheme. You know what I mean? The overall defense get an F. Make no mistake about that. The overall defense get an F. We've given up a 50-yard touchdown pass in the last three games. You know what I mean? Now, now, now based off these grades, how I feel, it's self-explanatory where I think we need to improve if we're going to take this game in Dallas. If Dak Prescott is not healthy, 
um, we got to go after them. We got to go after them, man. We got to make them uncomfortable, man. They they come into hostile territory, man. But let me know what you guys think in the uh, comments about the grades, man. That's just where we at at this point in the season. It's important that we talk about this right now at this very moment while we're 7-7 seven and seven and we're fighting for the division crown on Sunday. Let's talk about it now in a proper context because next week, when, next week, whether we win or lose, you know Philadelphia Eagles fans are so fickle. If we lose this game, it's going to be a hate train. It's going to be a hate train. That's just how they rock, man. So it's important, to, it's important to give these players their flowers now for having us in this position to have this moment. We could be the Redskins. We could be the Giants with nothing to play for. Let me know what you think.